all of you beautiful people out there, my name is Majestic Muffin, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Now, I don't know if you guys are on social media or anything, but on t Tuesday? Yes, on Tuesday I couldn't record because I was busy working on finals and papers and stuff. And yesterday, we were going to get something. Um, I have the Heartbound demo, and I was going to record it, but something messed up. And so, now you you can't see it. Um, I'm gonna try to play the demo tomorrow and see if it works. If not, we'll just have to finish this game and play something else until I get my desktop. Until then, like I said, it'll be more games like this and stuff, so yeah. Now let us dive right in and continue on this tale. <laughs> it's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yuri's coming to visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we- we- <laughs> Meanwhile- I'm extremely tired, by the way. I'm running on, like, zero sleep. I'm running on zero sleep. A crap ton of caffeine, caffeine and sugar, and anxiety. That is what you have right now. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already tell learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. She better be okay, I swear. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything. I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Yeah, I was about to say, let's go- Oh, her house nice. Let's talk to her. I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. Yeah, my best friends and I do that, too. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. Oh, I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Oh, hi! Oh, you're so cute! I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. Okay, I didn't hear the music for a second. We have a fan on and it's so loud. So if I just don't speak for a second, I'm listening to the music. <laughs> Cause usually, yeah, usually when the music starts being all wonky, then I know that my recording is gonna be screwed for the rest of this. <laughs> so just so you know, there's a minute of silence between us. There's something on our face, on my screen. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh. I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much really changed, though, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. It doesn't look very messy. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Yeah, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Oh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Oh, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Kaneki. Huh? Why can't it just be like it's how it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, oh no! If I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now, but this... It's just my punishment, isn't it? Getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. 
<laughs> you can't giggle after that! <laughs> Sayori! <laughs> I grabbed Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So... Alright, so tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. <laughs> Sayori gives me an empty smile. You're really putting me in a trap, Kaneki. But... You're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it like that, aren't you, Kaneki? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is... I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy into caring to waste my- to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. <sighs> Sayori, my heart hurts. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I saw the warning signs early on in the game, and I figured it might be something like that. <sighs> I hate reading those out loud. <laughs> Makes me really sad. <laughs> I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this information from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Huh? Why is that you've never told me about this? It almost feel like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's... Only so much I can do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort. Ooh, I didn't see that. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. But it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. Please don't laugh after that. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone, it feels like a spear going through my chest. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Kaneki. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. <laughs> Sayori, stop it! Sayori... Wait, tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish, and I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand, and now you come here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish, that's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments, because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. <laughs> uh, Kaneki, Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. Oh my gosh! <sighs> I need to put a disclaimer on this video. Disclaimer. Emotional hurt. <laughs> if I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain on her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. 
If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. Oh. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me and return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Kaneki. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain, but her hugs are so warm. That's really scary, too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival's tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like me to... to how would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um... Ah! <laughs> it's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice, then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day with her here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel- No, don't! Please don't! If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun! To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if it would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah, uh, it's... Kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. <laughs> I'm in so much pain! <sighs> I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy, but it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over, too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, thank goodness. Or, that's not her voice. Thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. So you brought a lot of stuff with you? That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least, I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. Oh, is this our bedroom? This isn't too dirty. <laughs> I take her to my room. The first thing she does is glance around cur <laughs> Curiously... Which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my- It would be- Wait. Yeah, I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, I mean, that would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there- I snatch Yuri's wrist, which in the process- Which is in the process- Oh my gosh. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if she's making sure she's keeping track. So, um, should we get started? Ah, <laughs> yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take your guests to a faraway place, although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy for you to get... Oh my gosh, it's easy to forget that you're a pretty interesting per It's easy to forget that you're such an intense person. There we go, I set the sentence, moving on! <laughs> intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. 
It's something that I like about you, actually. Flirting with everyone is not good. <laughs> is that so? That makes me feel relieved. I'm kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the po- Ooh. Don't know what that was? We're just gonna continue and hope it wasn't something too important. I was going to use them during the poetry event. <laughs> oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri. Yuri? That is your name. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. Uh, what's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. Hey, my roommate has some of those! How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Uh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Mine is dogs. <laughs> Depending on the oils or herbs you, herbs you use, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. That was an odd sentence. Didn't think I'd ever say that, but you know? Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes a cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin array of vapor begins to spout through a small hole in the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine, essentially. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them through, through, flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Ooh, are we gonna make some origami stuff? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Jeez. Oh yeah? <laughs> what will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang them to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbon to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you'd put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Aw. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Or it's the jasmine essential oil. Here's a marker pen. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character in each paper, doing my best to manage my um, my, ban my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then, she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Huh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver hand has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, well. Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise, you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I know what she means. Not in a weird way, but I know what she means. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Not that, I just I just think they look cool. <laughs> uh, what am I saying? <laughs> Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting to be interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife. 
with the handle facing me. I take it and turn around my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. It's a solid way to go. <laughs> Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the points of the knife with my index finger. <sighs> How stupid on a scale of 1 to 10 are we? Hmm? Why did you do that? It's a... <laughs> what do you have? A knife! No! Sorry. I didn't expect it to be at... To the be at oh. I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. It takes my hand and it gives the wound a closer look. Ah. She stares at it and, notice and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. No. Excuse me? Ma'am? The hell was that about? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Sturtle, I instinctively pull my hand back. Oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. Is that just your instinct? <laughs> what? I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri... That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. But I do something like that. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sure it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but... I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. No, don't- Oh, come on! Really? <laughs> what the hell? Did you really just do that? Now we're even. You just looked at me like I did something wrong. You did! I knew that would be a bad idea. Now for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Kaku. Your giggles shyly. Huh? Are you calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Ah, I don't think I need one actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. <laughs> That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I watched Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about that. What the heck? That's really strange. <laughs> like, it's, like I said, is that just your instinct? Is that what you do other than like trying to like get some toilet paper or something? Or some Kleenex or some something like that? to, like, suppress it, and then go get a band-aid? Because that's what I would do. I would... <sighs> okay. After we finished attaching the paper, the paper to the ribbons, we laid them out side by side. It looks be better than I expected, and will be very effective as a door trick. It looks great. Good thing... Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Pinterest? Same. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. Really? It's not like she just said that. <laughs> we'll need about six cups of water. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Okie dokie, artichokey! Taking your advice, I decided to use small plastic bathroom cups. Bathroom cups? Rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring them back to my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quick quickly unrolling her sleeve, putting it back over her arm. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Ah, <laughs> no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, sir. Uh, let's mix the paint. Okay, Yuri hurriedly- I didn't read all that. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint- 
I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. You can hang it on the wall behind the podium in front of the classroom. Oh, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it will be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class project we had back then. It's relaxing. Oh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to yourself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person, even if it's something simple like reading. It doesn't even matter if you don't talk much. Thank you! Preach it! Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my, ha my head to bump into hers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yuri reels back and quickly lifts my hand in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Oh, your face. There are droplets of paint on your face and neck. That's bound to happen when you're painting. You shouldn't have worn such a cute sweater. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I return to the room and kneel back down in front of it. <clears throat> well, hello there. Here. I pat your face and neck with the towel. Is something wrong? It's hot, I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I started to retract my hand. But Yuri, suddenly... Suddenly... Hello? Hello? <laughs> Sir? <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Wait. Hmm? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah. Keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eye. It's an intense expression that I recognize for when she, from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze and belted by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of jasmine oil give me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist. My wrist sent a tingling sensation through my arm. Suddenly, your face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah. Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. <laughs> Awkward? Awkward. <laughs> the moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. But her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore that the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it! I finished filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here than... Do you bring it in the morning? I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Oh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we were managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little bit concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Oh. So you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we would have extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself, I, I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm 
sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So? I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. No? <laughs> Gathering all of her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounds like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over or we can go out somewhere. Oh wait, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Gunny. Kind of Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. Hi! You're very close. <laughs> kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't get the chance to as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori? Huh? Ah! Hi, hi Kaneki. Sayori? Just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry, but we'll all be able to... Wait, yeah, but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... Woohoo! Oh boy! <laughs> but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... Why is there no music? So that's fine, right? Of course! Sayori beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hears off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori... I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. Oh. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. And how close you got to her. It makes me really happy. Um, is that a tear? I don't think you're happy. That <laughs> you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? <laughs> it hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. You are such a bean. Please. <laughs> it's true. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being so selfish. Hanukkah was right. I should just... Excuse me? What did she say to you? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So, even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But Sayori looks away, put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared. I'm really scared. What are you scared of? I'm scared that... that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. <sighs> okay, chill out. <laughs> that's how I feel. And that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I saw my hand down Sayori's arm and squeezed her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, say or not. Even if you don't understand all your own feelings. I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Oh, my heart, my soul! This is what we've been waiting for! Oh my gosh, this is so much pain! Oh my gosh, I definitely could end the episode here. On a cliffhanger. You know. I could. But I won't. <laughs> I won't. Um.
I love you. <laughs> Those are my true feelings. I I love I love her so much. I would die for her. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner, but spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day helped me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Honey. Oh, my heart. Suddenly, Sayori wraps her arms tightly around me. Is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be my happiest moment for me. But why? Even now? Why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there with you every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Okay. I trust you. You better, you bean! Sayori and I slowly release each other. So? I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know. I want everything to be the same as it's always been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I can handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary for me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace, pace suits you best. Hey, Kaneki. Sayori gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Hmm? I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It feels like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her and she loves me. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be so doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me. And I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. <laughs> okay! Okay! It's the day of the festival. Let's go for a little bit more. I want to see how... Oh, oh, do they have to be in their uniforms for the festival? For the festival, do you think? Let's keep going for a little bit more. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori, but Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going into her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text, reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. Oh yeah, we were all gonna we were all gonna hang out, weren't we? Also, why is there no music? <laughs> but knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Will it? Will it really? Where is the music? Why is there no music? You're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we were performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days like this important, she'd try a little harder. Whoa! After yesterday, you say that? Thank you. Jeez. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But 
Maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Kaneki. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But that literally gives you no right to know about our personal lives. Did Sari really tell her everything that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Huh? <laughs> Monica's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I... I'm afraid because there's no music, okay? This is freaking me out. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the one they performed during their practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. I, It's one I haven't read before. Um... Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Kaneki? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori has written, but more than that, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Sayori, so... Oh. Well, all right. Try not to stick too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself! Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. <laughs> what was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help wake her up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and that's what I need- that's what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I didn't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. Oh no. I swallow. My heart is thumping so much. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking up in her own house? That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. It's a kind of a breach in privacy. But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Say- What? Are you kidding me? What? What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday. I don't like the music. I told- I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. And why- why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her. He shouldn't have confessed to her. That's what not what Sayori needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. And why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. But I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with, with her like it always has been. But I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just... 
lost my best friend, someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. Is that a hint at what I should do? I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. Enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers, but I still couldn't do what she needed from me, and now... I can never take it back. Never. 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 What? Ex ex excuse me, sir? girl ran towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making day, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently. And I would get tired of waking, waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the sidewalk and let catch up to me. Sir? Sir? <laughs> it's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. No, you haven't! <laughs> Oh my F! I always tell myself it's about the it's about time I met some girls or something like that, but I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I start blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. Honestly, same. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. <laughs> Kaneki? Monica? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Uh, yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? <laughs> About that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make- Ooh, I did not read that. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A liter- <laughs> A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of- Dull. How many members do you have so far? Um, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. Liar! <laughs> it's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, Kaneki. 
By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Ah, I mean, I guess so, but in that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please. I don't like you. Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet, Kaneki, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. And thus, today marks the day. I sold my soul to Monica in her, her irresistible smile. I, timid, I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally for third-year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy. <laughs> what about Sayori? Swings open the club room door. I'm back! And I brought a guest with me. <laughs> okay. Huh? Uh, a guest? Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club doesn't have to worry. It's full of incredibly cute girls. So, let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a person. Uh, anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. Hmm. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So I ran into Kaneki in the classroom and he decided to come out and check the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica. Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to... Well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Kaneki? Okay, this is too much right now. We're just gonna... Mm, okay. Yeah, no, we're gonna end this episode here. I... I don't even... Listen, I told you guys I played this game before, right? But... <laughs> there are many parts that I have A, either forgotten, or B, haven't seen yet. So I am shook. <laughs> and depressed. <laughs> oh my gosh, I... Okay! <laughs> Heartbound couldn't have been this depressing, right? But, okay, I have no idea how much longer this game is going to go on, so I might finish it Friday or later. But as I said, m uh, Monday? Monday. As I said Monday, the videos will be a bit wonky because of my exams and everything and, like, moving out. So if you don't get one and I don't post anything on social media, that is le raison. So... Comment on other games I should play next. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you feel like it, and I will see all of you beautiful people in the next video. Bye!